Good evening, our dear viewers. Welcome back once again to our program, Knowledge is Power. My name is Pastor Fred Mutesa, and I'm really, really excited about what we are going to cover today. But today I'm going to be giving you a recap of what we've been covering in the past few episodes. Uh, this program is brought to you by Live Christian Center Mission. This ministry is located in Gayaza along Namulonge Zrowe Road. Uh, this ministry is one kilometer off Gaza Trading Center. So once you are in Gaza Trading Center, you can drive just a kilometer away on the highway and you will find us. You'll see our signpost there. Um, I'm glad to tell you that Bishop is already in the house, but before I even invite him, I want to give you a recap of what we covered. Uh, we've been discussing very important concepts of our salvation. If you're a Christian out there, you, you, it is very important that you know why you needed to be saved and and why god actually had to save you and 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 bishop told us last time that jesus became our advocate uh and 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 for him to save you you have to choose him these are a few things i want to remind you that jesus's services are free but not donated which means he cannot he cannot choose to be your advocate unless you choose him. And that is the concept of confession where you have to tell Jesus that today I'm giving you my life and I want you to be my advocate because I don't know how to please God without you. And today, beyond that, I want Bishop to add on and I'm glad to tell you that he's already in the house. Bishop, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, last Sunday or last Wednesday, you told us about the concept of salvation, yes, yes. and then you taught us very, very deep principles of th that that make Jesus an advocate for us. Mm -hmm. And you told us we have to choose Him. Mm -hmm. And uh, from my observation, you, you, your your teaching was surrounding Jesus as being the only way mm -hmm. to, to to salvation. Mm -hmm. So I have two questions I want to pose to you. Yes. Uh, First of all, is Jesus the only way to heaven? And then secondly, did God really have to let Jesus die in order to save us? Did someone have to die, have to die for, for, for us to be saved? I'm out. <laughs> uh, good evening, viewers. Uh, once again, I want to appreciate uh, your time and your, uh, your support for this program, Knowledge is Power. Uh, I bring you greetings from your family and also from our church. Our life Christian Center, guys. Uh, uh, I want to thank our our, our partners and uh, our sponsors who have made it possible for us to be on air, uh, sharing the word of God with you on Sunday, which is in the Uganda program, and also today on Wednesday. Uh, I want to thank you for your prayers and also for those who have shown support uh, and also sending uh, words of encouragement on our mess on our WhatsApp uh, uh, lines. Thank you very much. Uh, to handle the two questions that you've uh, mm. you posed to me, yes, yes. Uh, it's very interesting. These questions have been asked over and over again. <laughs> uh, there have been uh, a concern about people mm. wanting mm. to know why uh, Jesus and uh, had to die, and more so to die such a cruel uh, nature of death. To be ashamed, also, yes. Uh, another question. Uh, today we are living in a time when we have liberal theologians who are uh, trying to reduce the claims of Christianity, where we say that uh, Christianity mm. is the only true religion, is okay. the only true faith, mm. uh, because of, of uh, some of the uh, cardinal tenets of our faith that really point to the fact that it is what God uh, it expresses mm. what God did mm. to save mankind. Uh, so, uh, uh, there are so many different uh, ideologies being, uh, you know, moted around uh, that pertain to salvation. But there's one thing we need to appreciate: yep. that uh, Jesus, when he came, he said that I am the way. He never said that I'm a way. Mm. Uh, he was so definite about it. Okay. He okay. is the way. When something is being spoken with an article there, mm. it means it's exclusive. It's exclusive itself. Okay. If you say the man, that means it's, it's more than men. Mm. Uh, mm. If you say a man, that means there might be another man. But Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. 
So these are the three things as we read them in John chapter 14. Chapter 14. John chapter 14. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are opening up. Uh, John chapter 14. Bibles, John mm. chapter 14, verse mm. 6. Mm. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 6. The Bible says, Jesus answered. Okay, let us begin with Thomas' uh, uh, a question to Jesus. It says, uh, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Now, uh, to, uh, Thomas, uh, Thomas's quest mm. was about knowing the way. Mm, mm. Of course, there were so many other Jesus going to lead them to where he has been telling them for the three years. Okay. Now, remember that some of the things has told them, he told them that I came from the Father. Mm. And I'm also mm. going to the Father. In verse, in chapter, in verse 1, he says that let, new, let not your hearts be troubled. Mm. Because I'm going to the Father to prepare a place for you. So they wanted to know that if he delays, if they were to look for him. But if he doesn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if they were to look for him, mm. which way would they follow? Mm. Which way would they, uh, you know, in a pursuit in order to be able to find him? So okay. Jesus told them that I am the way. Mm. And I'm told, not only I am the way, but I am the truth. If you're trying to look for truth anywhere, yes. you can never find it other than you'll find it only in Jesus. And also he put it so candidly clear that I am the life. You know, there are so many life. Uh, you can, uh, there's physical life, there's spiritual life, mm. uh, there is any type of life. But if you're looking for eternal life, eternal life is in your impressed Jesus. So he was very clear about this. I was very clear about this. So Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 also tells us that Jesus is the only one who has made a way for us. If you're looking for a way to heaven, uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 4, uh, let me read from verse 14. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, mm. Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize uh, empathize with us with our weaknesses but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are yet he did not sin mm. let us then approach god god's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive uh we may receive uh a mercy and find grace to help us uh in our times of mercy you know jesus has made a way mm. he's, uh, he's mm. gone to heaven he's opened up heaven for us is opened up. The Bible says he has ascended. He has ascended in heaven. He has ascended in heaven. And he also say, you know, the Bible says, uh, the Bible says that uh, he has become our high priest. Mm. You know, when Adam was being chased out of Eden, uh, the way that used to take him to the presence of God yes. was closed. Was shut. Okay. Uh, that's Genesis chapter, uh, Genesis chapter three. The way that used to make give him access to God's presence was closed. Yes, mm. it was shut. Which uh, it was not only just shut, but it was uh, it was also uh, securely guarded. Mm. Securely guarded. That is Genesis chapter three, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are reading. I think that. Uh, 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 yes, uh, we are reading. Let us read the uh, verse twenty-four. He says, "But after he drove the man out, mm. after he drove the man out." He placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden a mm. kelpin and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Okay. So you see... So God never wanted... Ma the, the man who is a sinner to access the tree of life. The man is a sinner and is not given any access back. <laughs> okay. There is no way you are going to find your way back to heaven. Because the only way which Adam used to use, mm. the only passage, the only access... Mm. that Adam used to use to access the presence of God. By the way, the term Eden means the presence of God. Yes, yes, yes. It means yes. the presence of God. Mm. So you see, Eden, uh, 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 Adam, Adam was enjoying the presence, the presence of, of God. God. Yes. The beauties, you know, the provisions, the joy, every, you know, every enjoyable life that mm. he had, it mm. was because he was living in the presence of mm. God. Mm. So when he sinned, he had to be moved away from the presence mm. of God mm. and sent out. And when he was sent out, the passage was left closed. Okay. No human effort can be used 
to remove the cherubim. This is an archangel mm, mm. with a fierce sword turning forth and you know, uh, you know, you know, making sure there is no, no possibility mm. that can be created by man to make his way back to God. So, in other words, if the way was closed, a way had to be made. Okay, a way had to be made, and he who made, who made the way for us is Jesus Christ. Jesus made a way, and not only did he make a way, but he has also become the way. So that, that makes Jesus the only way Jesus is the to only salvation. Way. Also, okay. furthermore, we say uh, we see here, uh, you know, the, the uniqueness of Jesus. Why people must uh, stop all other kind of thinking and put their minds on Jesus. Let us look at First Timothy, First uh, Timothy, uh, chapter two. Let us look at what Paul writes here in chapter two, First Timothy. Mm. He says. Um, First uh, Timothy chapter two. Uh, chapter two. Uh, First Timothy. Uh, we say here. Um, this uh, now verse three. I'm going to read from verse three. It says, "This is good and pleasing. Uh, pleases God, our Savior, who wants all men to be saved. This is the. Mm. You know, this is what pleases God. He wants all men to be saved. Why? Because this is what He has done, and to come to the knowledge of truth. For there is one God." And one mediator between God mm. and mankind, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. Now, the, word, uh, the term here used mediator can also in Greek be translated as a bridge. Mm. Mm. Uh, you know, when there is a river, uh, when it is a, okay, there is a valley, you on one the other side and the other, there is, and someone is on the other side. Mm. So the only one who can bridge for us to be able to access God is Jesus. Is it, can I, am I right to say that Jesus is also a negotiator? Uh, okay, you can lo look at that from the time, okay. the time of being there and But mm. when you say the only mediator mm. between mm. God and mankind, okay, the only link, all right, all right, the only all right. possibility, the only passage mm. men man have to access God is Jesus Christ. There's no any other mediator. So, 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 Bishop, uh, that that's very clear, but. Uh, <laughs> I received so many questions from people, and mm -hmm. you, you've, you've, you've cleared it that Jesus is the only way. Mm -hmm. But I want also to, to make sure that you clear it for our dear viewers. Did, didn't Jesus break the law? Because when you read most of the books in the New Testament, mm -hmm. it looks like the Pharisees were telling Jesus that he broke the law. For example, like, like the law of Sabbath. He would mm -hmm. perform miracles on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> People are asking, didn't Jesus break any law? Uh, uh, um, well, I think uh, that could be... Okay, maybe I just have handle it a little bit before I handle the second question. Okay. Uh, the okay. truth is, we should also don't forget. Mm. There's one thing that people have to appreciate. Mm. That when you look at Jesus, yes. you should uh, try to uh, humbly appreciate yes. that you are not just looking at the son of Mary. Mm. Mm. You're not just looking at a man. Mm. You are looking at God. Okay. If that one comes into your mind and you appreciate that, then you will know that you are looking at the lawgiver. Okay. And the lawgiver who is above the law. Mm, mm, mm. You, you know, God could not give a law to which is subservient. Mm. He could not give a law to which uh, which has authority over him. That okay. is why Jesus, one time, he said that the Lord, the Sabbath, the Lord, the Lord is uh, Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. Mm. The Lord, the one term Lord used there is the clear uh, so uh, above Adonijah, one with authority. Okay, is okay. the have authority over the law. Okay. So when you are talking about Jesus, you should know that Jesus is the one who gave the law, to which all of us are called to obey, and therefore he's not going to be called to obey to the law he gave. Mm. Mm. This is where everything must begin. If you cannot appreciate that Jesus is more than human, then you'll be able to question uh, humanistic questions. But if you appreciate that Jesus is God in the human flesh, mm. and that is where Christianity is, that is a mystery. Paul calls it a mystery. He says a mystery of godliness. A mystery of godliness, I say in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, mm. that a mystery from which all godliness and our issues is great. He appeared in the human flesh. God appeared in the human flesh. Okay. So our ability to appreciate, and that's why even the angel, when he was announcing his birth, he says in John, in John chapter, Matthew, chapter 1, verse 21 and 22, he says uh, that you give him 
the name Jesus because he saved his people from their sins. He will be called Emmanuel, which mm. means God with us. So mm. this is very, very precious. Uh, the Pharisees obviously could make jokes with him because they had never moved away from seeing the skin. Mm. They mm. were looking mm. at a son of Joseph. They were looking at a son of Mary. Mm. They were looking of G at Jesus of Nazareth, who had come from a, a city of Lampens, a city of poor people. So they were reducing him. And even by the way, the term like the Jesus of Nazareth was first derogatory. Mm, it was, mm, you know, mm, putting mm. him down. Okay. A, a Jesus okay. of Nazareth, Jesus of coming from a poor city, a poor, mm. you know, a poor heritage. And then no wonder Nathanael, when he was speaking to his brother uh, Philip, uh, uh, he said, where is he coming from? He says, Nazareth. Oh, my God. There's nothing <laughs> there nothing, good. Uh, anything good There's that nothing comes good from that there. can come, can come from mm, Nazareth. Mm. So, uh, you know, people looked at Jesus. He was hidden. Okay. The reason why he was hidden, we shall explain later on. Why did he come in such a lowly state? Mm. He's God. But why did he come, or why did he assume humanity to come in such a lowly state? Mm. He came to identify with sinners. Okay. He came to identify with sinners. And by his principle of identification, he held his data rights in a... He put them in subservience. You know, he held them down so that you could be totally human okay so jesus did not break the law because after all he's the lord of the law <laughs> okay that's but he uh, came and put himself under the law mm, mm. so that he could be able to fulfill the requirements of the law okay the law required the law had the requirements mm. and one of the requirements was that sin must be punished Okay. Uh, Bishop, thank you very much for clarifying that. I'm sure our dear viewers, if you are there and you had that same question, because so many people, so many of you have, have sent in that question on our WhatsApp numbers, if you are there, and I hope you've got an answer. So, Bishop, I want you to address this last question. Yes, yes. Uh, couldn't God save us by using other means without killing Jesus? Did he really have to give in his son? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is a very, very critical question that mm. we need to address. Yes. Uh, uh, we should appreciate that Adam, the Bible begins by reporting to us that our first parents rebelled against God. Mm. That's what the Bible introduces to us. First of all, it introduces, it introduces to us that everything that we see and that what we do see, we are created by God. Okay. Secondly, it also informs us that before, after God had created everything, Everything was good. So there was no anarchy. There was nothing that had gone wrong. Everything was good. There was mm. no sin. So Adam lived in an era of innocence. Yes. In an era, he was an immaculate creation. Okay. He had no sin. So he had, you had the choice to live on and on and on and on as long as you obey. Mm, you should mm. also appreciate what the Bible has said already in uh, Genesis chapter 3, the last verse, that he was guarded and stopped from going to eat on the tree of life. I can use my sanctified imagination to, mm. see, to say that among the things that Adam had been forbidden eating, the tree of life was not part of it. Yeah. Yet it was in the garden. Yes. So it means that when he was still in the time of innocence, he had access to the tree of life. He had to enjoy the tree of life so that he could be able to live on, on and on and on. Did, did he know it was the tree exactly. of life? Exactly. The tree of life is a gift to the obedient. Okay. No, life, my, my question is, yes. did Adam know that this was a tree of life? Yes. Uh, yes, obviously. Obviously. Because among the tree, he, was, he had been given access to all mm. the tree. God okay. had told him, eat every mm. tree, mm. but only one tree. So which means to me, if the, if, the, if the Bible says that there was a tree of life in the garden of Eden, which means Adam had the access to eat the tree of life. <laughs> and then you have to know that the tree of life mm. is a gift to the obedient. Okay. To those who, are, who lift God and uh, choose to serve him and to be subservient to his, uh, to his authority. Yes. They have yes. the right to the tree of life. And when you go in the book of Revelation, mm. the Bible says that those who enter eternal life will be given access. Mm. We shall be given access to the internal life, to the to the tree of life. So, which means the tree of life is a preserve. Okay. Is a preserve of those who have yielded, those who have surrendered, those who have chosen to serve God. So Adam withdrew the the surrender. Mm. He withdrew the loyalty. Mm. He withdrew the submission. 
and he chose to disobey God. Mm. And so God had to move in quickly. Move in quickly. Because he had eaten what had been forbidden, he could not be allowed to continue eating the tree of life. So in other words, that was a sentence of death. Okay. When you are withdrawn, when you denied to eat the tree of life, it means a sure way mm. to death. Mm. So you have to look at this. Uh, so when Adam was uh, sinned, he was denied to, end, uh, to eat of the tree of life. But at the same time, God killed an innocent and more. Okay, Bishop, I'm, going to, I'm sorry I'm going to pause you right mm -hmm. there. Because uh, what you're explaining right now, we've, we've had this question before, mm -hmm. but I'm sure our dear viewers would want us to review that again. Mm -hmm. At that very moment when Adam ate the fruit, and, and you've already told us that the Bible says that God wants all men to be saved, mm -hmm. don't you think it would, be, it would have been appropriate for God to probably tell Adam not to eat, to warn him to, to, prior to eating the fruit? Uh, he had already told him. He told him he, didn't, he never hid anything. I, I'm saying in the process when Eve brought the fruit, why, why didn't God interject? Uh, no, 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 no. Because God had already created man yes. with an ability to choose. Okay. All that right. was a noble right. gift. Mm. You know, the gifts of God are revocable. When God gives you something, yes. is, it's up to you to use it to his glory mm. or to use it to your own destruction. Mm. Mm. Because anything given to you that you do not use for God's glory, you will end up using it for your own destruction. Okay. So, you know, that, it was the, that is it. Mm. The gift of choice given to man is given for man either to choose to use the gift for God's glory or to use it for his own destruction. So, God, you know, that is the alternative. That is the, that is the liberty, the freedom okay. God had given Adam. Okay. So mm. God was not going to shout to Adam, 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 please, don't <laughs> eat. No, no, no. He had already in, in, uh, given him the intelligence. Mm. The intelligence. Mm. Yes. He had given him the will, the ability to decide what he wanted to do. And Adam, in fact, of instead of deciding to obey God, he yes. decided to disobey. Okay. And okay. when he decided to disobey, uh, repercussions are crude. Mm. You know, uh, uh, repercussions are crude. And uh, one of the things is that he was denied to have access to the tree of life. Number two, there's something that we need to learn about what happened in, in the Garden of Eden before God just uh, sent away Adam yes. from the Garden of Eden. Number one, mm. God took an animal. Okay. This animal, we don't know its name, but the Bible says an animal. Mm. And he shed his blood. One of the things you need to appreciate that this, Adam, this animal was innocent. It laid down its life innocently, but for what? For sinner, so that a sinner's mm. a sinner's nakedness could Can be, be covered. covered. Yes, this was a uh, prefigure in uh, a prefiguring. Like more of, like a it was pointing. Okay. It was a type. It was symbolic mm. of what God will do to do to deal with sin. Blood had to be shed. Okay. Why did why is it so important that blood had to be shed? Because blood holds. Uh, hold the substance of physical life. Okay. Blood holds the substance of physical life. Whenever blood is shed, mm. life is expended. Is that why even the witch, the witch doctors use blood, blood for their sacrifices? Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Mm. According from, from the divine point of view, yes. blood, whenever blood is shed, mm -hmm. life is expended. So in other words, mm. life of Adam had to be only saved by another life. Okay. Adam and his, uh, his descendants, the only way they could be saved is by shedding of blood, blood. and not only blood, by blood of an innocent creature. <laughs> an innocent creature. <laughs> yes. One which did not, has no participation, mm. has no any kind of identification, mm. but it had to start Mm. And that is a principle of substitution, a principle of representation. Mm. Mm. God was telling Adam that for you to be saved, someone else has to shed blood. Has to you. shed blood for you to be brought back into my presence. But as of now, you cannot access me. Go out. Wow. So he left. Mm. But he had already left mm. when he, God had already told him. Mm. And another thing you'd have to appreciate that it was in the Garden of Eden that Adam told him. Mm. what that person will be. Okay. That innocent person. Mm. What that person will be. The Bible says that the seed of a woman yes. mm. shall come and bruise the head of a serpent. What, what did God mean by that? 
he, he was talking about a, a child, a, a, a son of a woman. Okay, okay. A son of a woman. You know, humanly, uh, we are not called sons of women, much as they are mothers. But <laughs> in a theological perspective, we are sons of our fathers. Son of men, yes. yes. Mm. So, in, in here, God was speaking about a woman is seed. That will be translated into a human being. Mm. Without any connection to, man. to the race of a, of a man. Okay. Because okay. all children born are coming from the lines of their father. Mm. Mm. They come from the lines of their father. But this time, this time Jesus had to come in a miraculous way. And Adam was only pros uh, promised that the seed of woman shall come. And it shall come to bruise the head of a serpent. In other words, to destroy. The word head speaks about authority and power. Okay, okay. So Jesus was going to come and destroy the power and authority over the devil of the human race. Mm. And that's what exactly Jesus did on the cross. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the shedding of blood uh, signified is pointed out in the Garden of Eden when Adam had just sinned. And when he sinned, he, he became self-conscious. He saw his nakedness. Mm. And God had to cover the nakedness. Only God can cover our spiritual guilt. Yes. Only yes. God yes. can yes. cover our sins so that he can be able to speak to us. Mm. He can mm. be able mm. to take us back into his presence. It is only him who can do it. So the Bible says, in, uh, again, uh, again to establish this principle, uh, God told uh, the children of Israel in Leviticus, I think, verse uh, 17, uh, chapter 7, sorry, Leviticus, uh, chapter 17. Uh, let us try to appreciate why uh, there was the need for shedding of blood, and moreover, a shedding of blood by an innocent person, an innocent person who was found without, with no, or with no sin. Uh, I've said uh, Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, chapter 11, uh, chapter 17, verse 11. Mm. It says, For the life of a creature is in the blood. Okay. I'm talking about physical life, not internal life, but the physical life. Mm. Physical life of a creature is in the blood. And I will cut them off from. Oh, uh, uh, no, no, sorry. Uh, and I have given it to you to make atonement. Interesting. So God chose blood to be an, a substance of atonement. To atone means to bring atonement, to reconcile, to create to a bridge again. hostility, mm, mm. you know, to appease for anger, to cover for the sin, to create forgiveness, to create what we call an apparent glorification. Mm. Okay. We okay. call it an apparent, because it is, it's not, we, we, apparently, we mm. apparently regarded righteousness mm. uh, because the righteousness of Jesus is imputed upon us. Mm. It is not what we have worked for, but it has been gifted to us. So you see, God is telling the children of Israel yeah, that if you do not want to die, mm -hmm. if you do not want to experience my wrath, I have given you the blood to do atonement. Uh, atonement for your sins, uh, uh, for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. And now listen to this. These were sacrifices of sheep. Okay. These were sacrifices of gods, but they were given for men uh, temporarily mm. as they wait for the coming Messiah. So, so the people who were using, who, who used the, the atonement using animal blood, yes. like the sheep, if they died during that era, were their sins forgiven or they had to wait for uh, Jesus? Their sins were covered. Okay. Their sins were okay. covered. You know, atonement, uh, the, the, the blood shed does two things. Mm. It, mm. Does, it appeases the wrath of God. Yes. In other words, it cools it down. It calms down the wrath of God. Mm. And at the same time, it expires. That means it covers the sin. Okay. But the sin, uh, the, the animal sacrifice, were insufficient in removing the sin. Removing. Okay. So, so these sacrifices could not remove the sin. They could not remove the sin. They could just cover. But they would just cover and give you a temporal lease to continue living. <laughs> a temporal lease, and when you are giving, this, mm. when these people are giving uh, this uh, and this uh, uh, lamb without blemish, mm. they were expressing what we call faith in anticipation. Okay. They were okay. expressing faith in anticipation. Mm. That is what Adam had been told. He had been told that you will anticipate 
Someone is going to come. Mm. Adam died waiting for that someone. And his, all the other descendants lived with faith in anticipation. The faith in anticipation was practiced by giving the sacrifice of, uh, of lamb and of, of, cow, of, of, of cows and, you know, all, and goats. So these asked animals which were given were expressing. Mm. We yeah. are a, a, a public show, a public manifestation and evidence of the faith people had okay. in the forgiveness and in the love of God through the one who will be the true Lamb of God. Mm. And listen to this. This was not a Lamb of God. This was a Lamb brought by the people. These goats, mm. these uh, sheep, these cows, they were not lamb, the Lamb of God. They were a Lamb brought by men. But there was a Lamb to be given by God. Okay. The Lamb to be given by God. He was the only one who had the qualification. To take away the sins of the world. And listen, mm, this mm. is this is what John says in uh, John chapter, I think, uh, uh, Luke chapter three, uh, or cha Luke chapter three. Oh, okay, let, uh, because I'm, I'm looking, time is chasing me, and I have a lot of things to explain. Mm. But Jesus, uh, John the Baptist, looked at Jesus and says, declared this in John. I think John uh, says that look, see mm. the Lamb of God, Lamb of God. Mm. Mm. I've said that these lambs were not of God. I, they were brought by men. That's interesting. They had been taken out of their herd. They were taken out of their flock. They were brought to the high priest to represent them. So, so God presented Jesus to us exactly. as a lamb. Yes. Because of love, he gave him to us. He gave him to us to mm. be able to do what the animals could not do. Wow. Uh, what does he say in Hebrews chapter 10? Mm. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 10. Ladies and gentlemen, we are trying to explain why exactly Jesus had to die. Uh, we have already established that there was a need for shedding of blood. Okay. And okay. Uh, without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission of sin. Without the shedding of blood. Because, because blood contains the, the, the life. It, it contains the physical life. life yes. And it, mm. it, it signifies death. Okay. When it is expanded, that means death. A life has been expanded. Okay. So death has occurred. So God had to look at death mm. as having a card, as a punishment for sin. Because the wages of sin is death. So in other words, for death to occur, life must be expended. So if the life was going to be expended, it was not, suppo it was not, it, mm. it, uh, it was not supposed to be of animals. Because the animal life was insufficient in its quality and also in its value. In a redeeming man. Mm. So there was a life that was needed, that was sufficient, that was valuable, that was uh, enough to redeem mankind. And what and that blood was the blood of Jesus. I've said I'm reading uh, Hebrews uh, chapter, chapter 10. Uh, uh, chapter 10. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 10. I'm reading from verse, uh, let me read from verse 4. It is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to her to take away sin. Now, mm. if you read, if you read, you read, you read this, uh, the word "take away," mm. uh, it means uh, to completely erase. erase yes. Mm, mm. And yet, the, uh, the the blood of the goats, the blood of the sheep, the blood of the cows could only just do covering, okay. but they could not take away. So, the, the the shedding of blood of cows was and goats was temporary. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Mm. So it was a temporal, it was a temporal, and it was, that's why it was, it was continued. Mm. You kept, you needed to keep on bringing. Every time. Every time. Every time you felt, <laughs> you felt you were not, not in relationship with God, you keep brought, brought us. So, so I'm imagining, so, I'm imagining people had some kind of stock for, for, exactly. you for have remission to make sure of sins. You, you did not have sheep, you have to buy <laughs> from those who had, and bring, bring to the high priest. Okay. And bring to okay. the priest mm. who was in charge of the season. To make sure he presents. And let me tell you something. Uh, when you brought the sheep, you confessed your sins upon the sheep in the presence of the high priest. Mm. Did you hear that? Okay. You confess your sin upon the sheep in the presence of the priest. So that the priest could slaughter mm. your sheep, take the blood and sprinkle it over you, and also go and sprinkle it on the master seat to plead master for you. This is exactly what Jesus did for us. So, so, Bishop, was it always automatic? Uh, th there is a very important principle here. If I brought my goat mm -hmm. or my sheep mm -hmm. to the priest, yes. was it always an assurance that 
that, that God is going to accept that sacrifice. Because he had given it. He says in Leviticus chapter 11 that I've given you mm -hmm. the blood to do atonement for you. In other words, to temporarily. Because I'm, I'm looking at someone who decides to actually <laughs> rear sheep mm -hmm. for, for atonement. <laughs> I don't know. They continue doing what they, whatever they want and then they keep bringing... That's, that's why we are living in the New Testament. <laughs> that things changed. Okay. Uh, things changed, ladies and gentlemen, mm. and because Jesus came to mm. do what the goats and the sheep and the cows could not, could do. not do. Okay. What they could okay. not do. Mm. He did it. He did it for us. And you don't, you don't need to give any more sacrifice. For those who are giving sacrifices, doing to I in remembrance of what we used to do, you're wasting your time. No more, no more sacrifice is needed to be given after the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. So God's sacrifice was the last one. Exactly. All sacrifices of animals are less in value and God wasn't pleased with them. In other words, the Greek word here is wasn't satisfied. Not mm. only just being pleased, but he was not satisfied. Okay. They were not satisfactory in their appeal to him to forgive. They were not satisfactory. So the people then lived with what to call unspectory faith. They were looking for the coming Messiah. Mm. They were expressing their faith and their hope for his coming. Yes. No wonder the prophets kept on telling them that he's coming. Mm. He's coming. He's coming. And even Isaiah well, put it so clear that he's going to be born of a virgin woman. Mm. It's going to be born of a virgin woman. And Michael continues to tell us which city will be born. He says he will be born in, uh, in Bethlehem. In Bethlehem. So you see, this is, this is very interesting when you make a keen uh, analytical study of mm -hmm. the scripture. You will see that God kept on reminding the people that my promise will come true. My yes, promise yes, will come true. Yes, and yes. the greatest promise God has ever given mankind is the promise of a savior. A savior coming to do what the animals couldn't do. Mm -hmm. What the mm -hmm. prophets couldn't do. What the angels couldn't do. Only Jesus did. Because he came from the Father. He came from the Father, his God himself, mm. put on the flesh, walked among us. His putting on the flesh was intended for him to be part of the human race, to, to identify like himself, yes. to confine himself, or to accommodate himself mm. within the human race, so that he can be our true representative, our true substitute in death. He's our true substitute in death. So when he was dying on the cross, we were dying with him. Okay. So, so Bishop... On that very point, uh, I'm, I'm trying to add up pieces mm -hmm. uh, from the things you've been teaching. Uh, you said, uh, w when I asked you about J the Sabbath, you said G God, Jesus is God of the law. So I'm using that same concept to ask you this mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. Did Jesus really go through the temptation? Did he really feel the temptations and the pain we go through? Yeah, exactly. That's what the Bible said or told us in Hebrews chapter 4. Okay. That we have a high priest who was tempted in the same way. We are tempted, okay. but he did not sin. The okay. only difference is that he overcame sin. I wanted you to clarify that exactly. for dear viewers. Because he was be be tempted in the same way we were tempted, but the only difference is that he never sinned. Because Why? some people even go, sorry, okay. some people go to an extra mile of saying that Jesus, because he was God, probably did not even feel the pain on the cross. Uh, 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 that is a failure <laughs> to appreciate uh, the principle mm. uh, we are trying to explain. Okay. That Jesus came to identify with man, to be like us, so that he can be our kinsman redeemer. Like I uh, remember last time I talked about the kinsman redeemer. Yes. He had to yes. be a relative, uh, fully, 100% related to us. And the, by the only way God mm. could come and relate to us by was to assume humanity. Okay. By assuming, assuming humanity, God brought himself to the level of mankind. Why should people be surprised that God can and couldn't die? <laughs> Let me tell you, God has power over life and has power over death. He's God. He's yes, God. Indeed, yes. And if, mm. you know, that's why I said people should not try to reduce God to their level of understanding. Mm. He's mm. God and he has power. Mm. He will have power to raise the dead. Mm. If he cannot have power over death, then he will not have the power to command death to vomit those who died. So this is very, very interesting, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, so, I'm still in Hebrews chapter, uh, chapter 10. Chapter 10, yes. Uh, chapter 10, here we say, Therefore, when Christ came into the world, listen to this, Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice offering you did not desire, mm. but a body you prepared for me. Ladies and gentlemen, a body you prepare. It takes us back to how Adam was created. <laughs> so, 
so, Adam so, was created <laughs> and the body was formed. Mm. And Adam was brought and breathed into the body. So in other words, the body was formed. Jesus is saying, you prepared a body for me. The one who is talking, mm. is talking even before the body was made. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So he came and entered the body. So, so God, God it, it's actually showing that it is God who designed this whole exactly. thing. You know, he's, he's giving, he's, 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 it's, it is pointing to the way he designed the salvation program. He has already told Adam mm. that there will, there will be need for the shedding of blood and blood of an innocent animal, okay. an innocent creature. And also Adam is being told that, you see, if this animal was sufficient, mm. if the blood I've shed was sufficient, you would have stayed in Eden. In Eden. But because it is insufficient, mm. you have to leave the Eden. But listen, I will say a seed of a woman. A seed of a woman is the promise of god so so bishop in summary the seed of a woman that is being talked about in genesis yes is actually jesus is, Christ. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly exactly okay exactly okay uh, one of the reasons why jesus had to be born without an earthly father was to maintain his spirit of holiness he did not have to have sin exactly he had to be sinless so that his nature could be sufficient this is interesting. In providing the atonement for the sins of the world. Wow. wow. His wow. nature had to be sufficient, uh, you know, uh, befitting. Mm. He had to be glorified. He had to be rich by virtue of his blood being sinless. So Jesus did not have to, uh, to have an earthly father for the fact that he could not have his nature contaminated by sin. Mm. Mm. So uh, he says here, you have prepared a body for me. With burnt offering and sin offering, you were not pleased. Mm. You were not pleased. I have loved this uh, translation. You were not pleased. In other words, you were not satisfactory. They, they were not, not meeting erase. your requirements. Mm. Mm. They could not erase the sins. They were not meeting your standards of holiness. Mm. The Lord demanded total death. But these were animals dying. You what? You <laughs> the Lord demanded you man. Judged man to die. <laughs> it had to be man to die, not sheep. Probably the sheep were also complaining to God. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are we it dying in this man to die? Mm. But the sheep and the goats were dying. Mm. So they were not pleasing, satisfactory. They were not meet the standards okay. of your holiness. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, we continue. It says, then I said, here I am. Look at this. It says, here I am. It was a willingness. It was a love gesture. Mm. Mm. And Jesus said that I, I came from the Father to do his will. This is his will. The will of the Father was that someone innocent, without sin, should die for the sinners. The Bible says in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I think verse 22, uh, 22, 22 27, it says that he, knew, he who knew no sin. Mm. Let me quickly read there. Uh, time is running, but uh, uh, I want to uh, uh, make this point clear to our, our listeners. Uh, that uh, Jesus uh, had to die. Jesus had to die. Uh, so that our sins could be remitted, could be re, uh, removed, and we could secure a pardon from God. The Bible says in uh, in uh, uh, Second Corinthians, uh, uh, verse twenty-one, it says here, uh, chapter five, verse twenty-one, Second Corinthians, God made him. I want you to look at this uh, terminology is used. God made him. Uh, uh, Bishop, which scripture is that? Uh, verse twenty-one. God made him who had no sin. Let us put it in our, our common language. Mm. God made him he who was innocent of any crime. Mm. Mm. All together. He who was innocent of any crime. He was made uh, to be seen, to bear the crime. He who had committed no crime. Mm -hmm. He who had not sinned in any aspect. He was made to be seen because sin had to be punished. So he took up the position of sin. So otherwise, God counted all our sins exactly. upon him. He took all the sins of the world and laid them on Christ. Isaiah, in Isaiah 53, mm. he put it so right. Isaiah 53, he put it so right. That he bore our sins in his flesh. Mm. He took our infirmities and our pain. And the punishment of our iniquities were laid upon him. So Jesus did, died substitutionally. He died in our place. We were the very people supposed to die. Mm. But because of love, he took our, our place. Ladies and gentlemen, time is running. 
<laughs> but I want to bring it to your attention, ladies and gentlemen, mm. that Jesus needed to die in order for the salvation of mankind to be provided. So, so Bishop, uh, we, we just have this one minute. Yes. But uh, in conclusion, from what you've told us, that uh, Jesus had to die for our sins. Yes. And, and he, ha he carried no sin. He never sinned, That's actually. Right. And I, also, I want also to note from what you've, you've read from Second Corinthians, uh, verse 21, mm. you've said that Jesus was a willing sacrifice. Yes, he was willing. So, so God, God chose him to die for our sins, but he was also willing. He, was he wasn't willing. forced. You know, you know a, a, a sacrifice accepted to God must come from a willing heart. Okay. There was a heart of willingness on his side. And that's why he said in John that uh, I have a right mm. to give my life and I have a right to take it back. In other words, I have a right to, to refuse giving it. But because of love, I chose mm. to come and uh, lay down my life. And that's why he says that this is love for someone to lay down his life for his friends. Jesus came to lay down his life for us. Uh, just why? Because he loved us. Not because of our good works. Because there was nothing that we could do to be able to meet the standards of God's holiness. But his love brought law. Brought him law to us. Uh, his hands, uh, his hand, uh, brought, you know, his love and his mercy and grace brought him law to us so that he could be able to take us up higher into the family of God. Ladies and gentlemen, salvation is a gift from God. All that we needed to do to be pardoned was done by Jesus Christ. Okay. All that you need to do to please God was done by Jesus. There's only one thing that is remaining for you, to believe in Jesus Christ. One yes. time the apostles came to, went, uh, went to him uh, in, uh, in uh, John chapter 3 and asked and said, Lord, what can we do to do the will of God? And he told him, believe on him who was sent. The only task that you have that remains of you, is to believe on Jesus Christ. God is not demanding anything from you other than belief. And from there, turn, begin to do things that please him and that appreciate his gift to you, the gift of salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, you can ask Jesus to come into your life because he came for you. He came in love of you. He came because he wanted to do uh, a mediatory work uh, between you and God so that you can be accepted in the family of God. I want you to repeat these words. If you have never given your life to Jesus, he can come into your life today because he says, look, I'm at your door knocking. If you can open to me, I'll enter. He wants to enter your life and change everything from there, from inside out. Let's pray. Uh, say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I accept you. I accept to be you my savior. To be my savior. Because you died in my place. Because you died in my it place. It would have been me dying. It would have been me dying. But because of your love. But because of you your love. You took my position. You took my position. I accept you. I accept, I accept you. your sacrifice on I the cross. I accept your sacrifice on the cross. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to come Change into my me. life. Change me. Give me a new life. Give me a new life. Write my name. Write my in name. In the book of life. In the book of from life. From today. From today. I confess. I confess that I'm saved. That I'm saved. If you have spoken those words from the bottom of your heart. Jesus has already come into your life because that is what he does to those who invite him. He will come. He has come into your life. He's going to change your life. I ask you to find a good church. Uh, uh, be pastored. Be uh, trained. Uh, be participative in that church. Don't just sit in church. Be active uh, so that you can get to uh, deepen your understanding into the love of God. May God bless you. Uh, thank you, Bishop. May God bless you. Our dear viewers, thank you very much. You've been wonderful viewers. This program is always there on Wednesday at 10 p.m. And it's brought to you by Live Christian Center Missions, over, being overseen by Bishop Robert James Kakande. May God bless you. Turn to you.